You are listening to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about AI-generated lyrics turned songs about propaganda. On this episode, the topic of conversation is not, in fact, a propaganda song, but is an episode about the time I put the prompt, write a song about the punk band Propaganda from Winnipeg, Manitoba, into an AI text generator that is making so much news right now in the world. So I put that prompt in, and the lyrics that came out are... From the prairies of Manitoba comes a sound that's so loud, a punk band that's unapologetic with a message that's so proud. Propagandy from Winnipeg with their guitars, they bring the fire, fighting for what they believe, inspiring us to never tire. With their punk and political flair, they're not afraid to take a stand against the powers that be in a world that's so bland. They're the voice of the underdogs for the marginalized and oppressed. With their music, they unite us. And help us find what's best. So here's to Propagandy, a band that's truly great. With their music and their message, they help us change the world's fate. So I put those lyrics up on Twitter and I got two submissions after I half-jokingly said, Hey, does anybody want to turn this into a real song? And I got two. So the first is by Brandon Salter, who joins me as the guest on this episode. And the second is by Chris Friesen from Winnipeg, who has been on the podcast before. Chris makes experimental music under the moniker Freaking Snap, and he appeared on the Portage La Prairie Part 2 episode from September 2022. So of his submission, Chris wrote, Freaking Snap as a musical entity and a personal enterprise of the human being behind it, Chris Friesen revels in concepts of ridiculousness. After all, that's how Freaking Snap has amassed a ridiculous volume of music In the last half decade, after years of swearing that I'd never sing on a song again, I first did a cover of the most ridiculous propaganda song, Portage La Prairie. This first thrust back into singing has been completely inspiring to the point that another propaganda cover has been prepared at this point, as well as one by I Spy. But back to ridiculousness. After Greg posted that he had AI lyrics about propaganda, I had to make a piece using those lyrics. The process I used was similar to the Portage La Prairie cover in that I used an edit from a recorded piece and threw the vocals onto it. I recorded the vocals by singing at my laptop and then threw it through some effects available on my recording software in an attempt to make it sound like I was the AI that wrote the words in the first place. As always, it's been truly an honor to record something completely ridiculous for Keith, Steve, and Greg. Please enjoy this bit of ridiculousness for what it is, something put together in five minutes with almost zero thought other than I want to be on Unscripted Moments because it had been a super important part of my heart surgery recovery of the last year and a half. So cheers. Cheers to you two as well, Chris. Thank you so much for doing another freaking snap cover for the podcast. So to start us off, we'll hear Brandon Salter's version of the AI lyric song. And then we'll hear the conversation with Brandon about his song. And then we'll close out the episode with Freaking Snap. So just an aside to say that this episode is completely absurd to the fullest degree and was just made purely to laugh, talk about music, make new friends, and goof around. So that said, enjoy.
Brandon Salter, welcome to Unscripted Moments, a podcast about propaganda. Thanks for having me, Greg. I am delighted to have you here, Brandon. I'm wondering if you can just spend a moment and introduce yourself a little bit to the listeners out there so they know a little bit about you. Sure. Uh, my name is Brandon Salter. I live in Seattle, Washington. Um, I am a musician and a teacher, a teacher, full-time musician for hobbies. Um, played in several bands over the years and pandemic kind of shut all that down. And that's also when I found your lovely podcast and uh, glommed onto it. And uh, yeah, just a big fan and uh, excited to be here. Well, it's a delight to have you here as part of the story, Brandon, for this podcast. I regret that it's under such absurd circumstances. Uh, so maybe in the future we can do something a little more substantive, but we're going to have a uh, a very strange time here today. All right. Because if anybody who follows me on Twitter or Instagram knows, I recently succumbed to the uh, curiosity of putting a prompt about propaganda into chat GPT, the AI software. And I said, write a song about propaganda, the punk band from Winnipeg, Manitoba. That was the whole prompt. And the lyrics shot out at the end with a verse one chorus, verse two chorus, bridge, chorus, and outro. And I put it on Twitter and I sort of half jokingly invited folks to turn it into a real song. And you are one of two people who actually... <laughs> <laughs> who actually went through with it. Um, you made a full song, which you've titled in the file here, The Prairies of Manitoba. Can I ask you why you went through with this in the first place? That's a great question. Um, I think, honestly, uh, this is so I'm a third grade teacher. And uh, my colleague and I, like, right before you sent this tweet out, had been talking about like what happens when our third graders get a hold of this technology. Yeah. And I think it's like a really important conversation to have. And I think that maybe that's what piqued my interest because like as an educator, it's like, you know, kids have tool access to things that we never imagined when we were growing up. Right. And so I think it was kind of like, Hey, I want to play around with this idea and kind of see what it's like uh, as absurd as it was. And as terrible as the lyrics were, um, I think it was just like, it was on my mind. I'm sure it's on a lot of people's minds right now, just like with all all the hubbub about it in the news. Um, so I think that's just kind of I was like, oh, that would be ridiculous and funny and also like very relevant to conversations that are happening right now. Yeah, you know, I'm a teacher as well, but my teaching job is a little different. So I teach fully online. My classes are 100 percent online and it's a big topic of conversation right now in my school that I work in because all of our assignments are done virtually from a distance. And when things are generated in an AI software, it's still unsure whether things like turnitin.com or play, like the plagiarism software is yeah. actually going to catch generated works like this. So there's a huge conversation going on about uh, can can this be fought? Can it be prevented in any way? And it's it's a really fascinating conversation to watch in the world of online education where I work compared to something like what you do in an elementary school compared to like what something like Keith does in a middle school and compared to what most of my friends that I used to teach with in mm -hmm. high schools are dealing with. And so the way this is being talked about across education as a as a whole yeah, it's a super fascinating conversation right now about where we're headed in the future with regards to learning and creativity. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. I'm also really curious just about like, you know, we know that like technology and AI is like inherently biased and racist. And so like, I also I've never explored ChatGPT. Like I haven't used it myself, but I'm just like curious, like what kind of biases are already in there and like um what kind of stuff is going to be coming out, especially like I got to imagine middle and high schoolers are like all about using this right now, <laughs> man. Well, so I am I actually have recently looked into this. And so I think about stuff a lot like uh, 2001, a space odyssey, like when the supercomputer Hal yeah. like does in the film becomes becomes more and more self-aware. Yeah. And then I read an article the other day about the AI chatbot at Microsoft that is making huge news at Bing. Um, and it amazes me that we, we continue to let this happen and how I personally have played right into this by typing this prompt into the AI software myself. Like I am 
totally a dupe. I'm completely culpable here. Um, like, but I read an article the other day about how Bing, in a long conversation with an Associated Press reporter, became more and more belligerent as the conversation went on. This is the AI chat really? bot <laughs> reacting personally, right? And so the AI chat bot at Bing was threatening the journalist's reputation, comparing the journalist to Hitler and Stalin, insulting what? insulting their looks. And it said to a reporter from the Associated Press, this is actually a quote I'm looking at right now, you are being compared to Hitler because you are one of the most evil and worst people in history. Because the journalist had like questioned, had like, you know, had certain ways they were reporting on news and then was saying to Bing that the reporting was like unfair. And so like Bing got very defensive uh. <laughs> and then it went on to say that the reporter was too short, had an ugly face and had bad teeth. So it's frightening how how radical it it is becoming quickly and here we are engaging with such software ourselves on purpose on purpose like yeah. i typing this into chat gpt i feel actually kind of kind of stupid that i actually engaged in it but you know we're typing things into the internet all of the time so i guess i was like what's one more thing so you know that is a, a wild story but yeah i mean i i think that that is the inherent problem of like the mechanization of everything and it's like obviously there's huge benefits to AI especially for folks that you know have disabilities and it like helps them like navigate this crazy world we're living in and it's like also can be weaponized very quickly and I think that the people who are creating it like you know it's just like what is their intention you know what kind of training and background do they have to even be engaging in like something where it's it's not just the technology right it's the social aspect like you're talking about like if all of a sudden it gets belligerent like what what does that mean like what is the what are the implications of that you know yeah are we heading straight towards 2001 a space odyssey how <laughs> yeah you know where the, where it all blows up um so i am by far not an expert in this. I am only like tangentially following these stories myself in the news. Mm -hmm. So I know that there's a lot of people out there who will have a lot more expertise like in these topics themselves. So I'm not trying to present myself as some kind of authority on this, just so everybody out there knows. I'm just following along the stories as best I can. Um, and it, but it's super fascinating. So I played right into this. I came up, I, I typed in this prompt. These lyrics came out and you made the song. So I want to hear the story about what you did in order to to make this complete song called The Prairies of Manitoba. All right. Um, so truth be told, I actually the music for the song I had already had finished. Um, I had written a while ago, just like in like I said, like I've been in bands my whole life and like pandemic shut everything down and I have not been playing. So like I've been, you know, writing stuff on my own or sharing things kind of like postal service style with friends. So I had this tune and I was like, I wonder if I can take these lyrics and, and smash them into something that I like, you know, did in my living room. And so that was like kind of just um, fed along with the obscurity of it and the not obscurity, but just the <clears throat> how preposterous this preposterous this is uh also I was like I'm not gonna actually spend a whole lot of time you know so I was like I basically had the music done uh and then I was just like sitting there and I was like I'm just gonna try to read the lyrics and see where I can fit them in the song so honestly like I think I maybe spent like a couple hours on it like it was not a super time intensive process process um but yeah it was you know, I kind of did a first round and I I'd sent that one to you and I was like, okay, like I slept on it for a night and I was like, I'm going to change this. And I actually sent it to one of my buddies because I was like, I need some feedback. And he was like, dude, you got to, <laughs> he gave me all these things. And I was like, I'm not putting all this effort into it. I'm just yeah. gonna, like, I'm just going to wrap it up. So yeah, I think like in, in all, like maybe an hour or two on the vocals and like the arrangement of the lyrics and stuff. And then, you know, there was like a bridge and I was like, I don't really have a bridge in the song. So there's like, I think the maybe the bridge or uh maybe the last verse and the outro are like kind of one and the same so yeah it's kind of like a mash of something that like you, chat gbt created and you put out on the internet and then i was like i'm gonna take this and shove it into something i already had so um it's a ridiculous song like 
I'm surprised <laughs> at like how quickly it came together and like you know it's not a good song but it's also like not the worst song so it's like the lyrics are awful and it's you can tell they're you know AI generated um but it was kind of a fun process like like I said I've been missing playing music so I was like oh here's an opportunity for me to and I'm not a singer like that's not I've been a bass player my whole life and so like you know to like sing vocals on this track was a little bit like you know this is a little vulnerable for me to be like I'm gonna put this out there in the world especially yeah. <laughs> with the lyrics <laughs> so um, as they're written how do you feel about the fact that like so we're owning the absurdity of this yeah. right we we both know that it's completely ridiculous we both know that the chat gpt ai software is an affront to art mm -hmm. essentially um it removes so much of humanity from it yet we're doing it anyway how do you feel about the fact that like the band themselves would be like oh you guys oh my god come on I, i'm sure they would hate the fact that we're even we even considered this or we're having the conversation which i think makes it all the more like preposterous and also funny and i feel like <laughs> i don't know like you know i followed propaganda for a long time and i think that like they are good at making fun of themselves and they are like yeah you know they like humor so like as much as I think they would hate this, I also think that they might think this is hilarious and be like, you guys actually spent time on <laughs> doing this. <laughs> so I don't know. But yeah, I'm sure that like every fiber of their being is against what we are doing right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, OK, so <clears throat> let's talk about these lyrics, because as you mentioned, they are completely ridiculous. Now, I'm really glad that the song you made is in the style that it's in, because in my head, all I hear is Iron Maiden and like protest <laughs> the hero. <laughs> I'm like propaganda from Winnipeg with their guitars. They bring the fire. Oh, like dude. to me, that's what to me, that's immediately what it was. It's like Bruce Dickinson or yeah. Rhodey from Protest the Hero. Um, and so uh, let's get into these lyrics from the prairies of Winnipeg comes a sound that's so, <laughs> so loud. <laughs> A punk band that's unapologetic with a message that's so proud. Tell me your, your thoughts on the verse, first verse. Uh, I mean, I'm just like, how did ChatGPT like know this? Which is like, because it's like, there's some truth to that, right? And I'm sure, mm -hmm. it's, you know, the IA is like punk and it's like associates that with loud. But like, um, I don't know, like, honestly, like that those first lyrics are some of my favorite as far as like the song is concerned uh, because they're so ridiculous. It's just like, it's kind of, again, that joke of just like, <laughs> let's make the most like eighties hair metal crappy lyrics, like, and just like throw it out there. Uh, yeah. Just super I, ridiculous. I can't um, even read it without laughing. <laughs> right. With the you sound know? so loud. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Oh my god. Um so then we have propaganda from Winnipeg with their guitars they bring the fire. I I mean that is a great line as far as like being stupid. It's amazing yeah. because yeah. everybody who's ever been on this podcast who's ever talked about this music has just been like, yeah, Chris, Beave, Sulin, some of my favorite guitar players of all time and it's really amazing that they chose guitars bring the fire. It's like, does Ch Chat GPT know that like Chris just like rips? Like it, it's that is wild though. Think about like, yeah, because I mean, Chris, such an amazing guitar player, and just like so prolific in shreds. I mean, be even Sulin and everyone, but like, yeah, I think I was also like, how did it? How did this AI know this? It's just yeah, wild. and fighting for what they believe, inspiring us to never tire. So one of my favorite things that I've noticed about propaganda lyrics from doing this show for the last couple of years is that you can have a song that is like so bleak, dark, 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 but you got to keep on trucking anyway at the yeah. end. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, this is how terrible things are, but hey, we're here. So <laughs> it's like this, it's, it's this this constant thing to um, saying how they feel about it, not holding back, being completely honest in their thoughts, but then saying, well, we're still here and we've got children, so we can't just give up. Mm -hmm. um, so that like that line too, to me just rings true. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Again, like how, how did the AI know how to say this? Like, mm -hmm. is it, 
is it going online and like looking at propaganda lyrics as it's typing it is it like just basing this on like a general idea of punk like but yeah kind of like because what what was the prompt you put into chat gpt write a song about the punk band propaganda from winnipeg manitoba that's it it didn't say anything else Wow, that's scary. Like thinking about like just being known for, you know, a politically progressive band like that, that it would get there. So obviously it's scouring the Internet in some way. Yeah, Um, we've got verse two with their punk and political flair. They're not afraid to take a stand against the powers that be in a world that's so bland. I mean, (laughs) oh, my gosh, I really hated that bland lyric like (laughs) trying to sing it and it was just like there's so many better adjectives than bland like uh yeah i think that's my my most hated part lyrics lyrically from this well everybody already heard your cover because i put it at the very beginning of the episode but whenever you sing the word bland like whenever i've listened to this song like five or six times now you sound completely disgusted with yourself whenever you (laughs) sing Whenever you sing bland, you sound completely horrified. And I was like, he hates this verse. Yeah, that I, yeah, that was my least favorite part, I believe. But we'll keep going. I'm sure I'll find another one. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so then we go back into the chorus again, and then we go to the bridge. They're the voice of the underdogs for the marginalized and oppressed. With their music, they unite us and help us find what's best. Thoughts? <laughs> I mean, it it sounds like a bunch of 16 year olds that are like starting their first band and they're like, let's write some let's write some like anti authoritism lyrics like I mean, they're like, yeah, they're not good, but it's like it's on point with propaganda and like, you know, like a a very uh, newbie lyric writer. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if I think about all the content and the topics we've discussed over the years on the show, like East Timor or um, First Nations men who have been like dr- driven out into the middle of the minus 30 degree Saskatchewan night and left for dead. You know, like there's a lot of topics that the band has covered that can fit that, um, you know, that underdogs, marginalized, oppressed those. But those are, I mean, clearly buzzwords that the that the chat GPT software just pulled from the Internet. But yeah. there's a but lot of human like- stories that we've featured on the show, you know. Yeah. And like, it's so true about the band. Like, obviously they're, you know, their number one thing is to just like tread and like be honest about what's happening in the world and not giving a fuck what anyone else has to say. So yeah, that's, it's right on. Yeah. And then we've got this, uh, this outro. Uh, so here's to propaganda. So it's like a toast, right? It's like a drinking song, a band that's truly great with their, me- with their music and their message. They help us change the world's fate. I don't think we can change the world's fate. I'm a little bit more of a pessimist on that regard, but you are a third grade teacher and, you know, you go to work every day and you work with these like, you know, these like eight year olds. Mm -hmm. Um, And my kid was in fourth grade this year, but she was in third grade last year. And the work that elementary school teachers do is so insanely hard. You have the hardest jobs in education. I'm completely convinced of it. Cause whenever I sub elementary school for four hours, once in a while, like I, I feel like I am like at death's door. Um, so what you are doing is, um, changing the world's fate. Like you're the one who's, who's doing it. Like people who work with, uh, with the next generation. And I think that's kind of what Chris has discovered about his own life too, from hearing his stories about like getting involved in his local community, coaching a lot of hockey, being involved with the kids in the neighborhood um, and things like that with sports. I think that he's kind of finding his own ways to see about changing the world's fate on like a super hyper local level. And Mm -hmm. I think that if everybody kind of leaned into that, uh, that's kind of like what this line to me is sort of about, even though it's AI generated ridiculous lyrical content. Well, I mean, I just think about like, you know, people like us that like, you know, listen to bands like propaganda when we were in our middle and high school years. Um, Think about like the impact they had on me and like the trajectory of my life, like, and like not just propaganda, but like all the punk bands that I was listening to. And it was like, it changed like the way that I viewed the world and it sent me off a path. And I think about like, yeah, like now, like right now it's black history month and we just had black lives matter at school week And I'm talking to my third graders about things that I didn't know about until I was in college, you know, and I think that they're so, they're so ready and they're so 
able to have conversations that adults can't have. And I do see like, yeah, there's a lot of messed up stuff happening in the world, but I'm like, these kids are like going to do way better things than we did. And mm-hmm. I'm sure there's going to be kids that do awful things, but like just thinking about, you know, as, as much hatred and terrible things that are happening right now, like there are a lot of young people that are going to do really amazing things and just have this, this, um, you know, worldview that is so different and so much uh, more progressive than <laughs> At least I had access to when I was growing up in a small, mostly white community. So, yeah, I'm really excited for a certain age of kids to uh, become voters and oh, yeah. get involved in in society um, because there's just like a level of pessimism and uh, hatred and, uh, you know, negativity that um, can be squelched over time it's just that we have you know certain generations that are so vastly different from each other that as one leaves the other enters and you never know what's going to happen um so you know thank you chat gpt for (laughs) encouraging us to heed the message of propaganda about uh being able to you know incrementally painstakingly painfully fight for a better fate for the world um Let's talk about something else. What do you think? Yeah, let's go ahead. Tell me what your favorite propaganda record is and why. It's so hard. I feel like I have like two, like two like seasons of propaganda in my life. Like let's talk more rock was like my jam for that was like the first album of theirs that I really like knew and fell in love with. And that was like kind of it. Like, you know, when supporting cast and, Build states and all that stuff came out. I was not really listening to propaganda at that time. Um, and I think it was like once Victory Lap came out, I was kind of like, oh, okay. And then I've gone back and now I think supporting cast is my favorite, much like yours is. I know. Um, Let's Talk My Rock just holds a really special place in my heart. Like I think it again, like it was an album that like opened my eyes to a lot of things that like growing up in a mostly white suburban uh town in washington like we didn't know about didn't have access to and so i think it it's uh plus like john k sampson is like my favorite songwriter of all time and like to have, to have the john songs on there and like you know um it's so good even though like i love todd and i love but like you know when empires came out and i was like who's this like gruff guy singing like <laughs> yeah where's where's the john um <clears throat> so uh yeah i would say uh, let's talk and then um uh what did i say supporting cast yes uh supporting cast those are my my two favorites i mean i love uh all their stuff i would say like probably my least favorite is how to clean everything um even though there's like amazing songs on there it's just like that's not really like my jam but you know so you know i recently got an email from somebody uh about the episode that i did with the winnipeg songwriter jacob brodovsky and jacob's songwriting mentor is john k sampson and yeah. christine fellows and also jason tate from the weaker thans played drums on jacob's record so it is this amazing amazing record that is like cut from the cloth of like the john k sampson like songwriting style because jacob has john as a mentor and somebody wrote to me and they were like that episode you did with jacob about john's work was so good and i just like you know i just i just love the fact that i managed to talk to him about that record but john's work is so awesome so why don't you tell me a little bit about your favorite like john material it can be within propaganda but it also can be like beyond propaganda as well oh, wow i mean that's hard i mean i think Again, it's like, I love all of his stuff. I would say like Left and Leaving, like the Weaker Thuns album is probably like the most special. Again, it's just like the time in my life when like that was really important. And like uh, one of my best friends, like in high school and early college was the one that kind of like got me into all that. And, um, you know, he ended up committing suicide. And so like, I have a lot of like really fond memories, like with with the weaker lands and with propaganda, even more the weaker lands and John Kay and like left and leaving. Um, so that, yeah, that's probably like my favorite area. I, I think that he, he's just like, 
the most brilliant lyricist of all time like the way that he paints a picture is is so magical and yeah i love that jacob bradowski episode and i actually because of that started following him and i bought the record and i was like this guy's amazing yeah what he's doing um so yeah it's cool like i mean that's been one of the cool things about this podcast is like you know you get all these people that i'm like oh they sound interesting i'm gonna go follow them on twitter or like ooh, that's a cool band so i think it's just again like the work that propaganda is doing of trying to build community that's the same thing that you and keith and everybody that's been part of the podcast is doing and i feel like that you know john k sampson as far as i can tell from being an outsider is just like so about community and you know all the stuff that he does in winnipeg and like you know propaganda with all of their community building work and uh but yeah john k sampson is i've seen him many times and this is embarrassing to say i've never seen propaganda um i was going to see them in seattle a few months oh. back, and chris got covid um so yeah i i've seen john many times and and love him and i was so excited to finally see propaganda and covid struck it down so did you did you see john like in various forms like did you see him with the weaker thans and then solo because i know he's toured with various uh lineups yeah. and things over the years yeah i've seen like all the weaker thans lineups like i think i think left and leaving i you've talked about this tour a lot with the constantines oh love that tour i think that might have been the first time i saw them when was that like 2001 or something? It was, I think it was 03, but my okay. God, the Constantines blew my mind. I was right against the stage and like Bry Webb is a huge guy. Yeah. And he like, you just like look up at him and it was just like so intense the whole time. I was like, this is absolutely incredible how great this is. Yeah. I mean, so like back then, and then like I've seen John a couple of times um, since his solo things. And it, it was not the last time I saw him this two times ago. I think off uh, his first like official solo that came out record um and he covered a couple of propaganda songs um live and like people were just going fucking ape shit like it was so exciting uh so yeah I I've seen all the in, um different versions of the John K Sampson live dude the uh the solo John K Sampson gifts when he plays that by himself is yeah. that is the way that song is supposed to be to me like whenever i hear it on on uh let's talk more rock now i can only think about him singing it by himself on stage and i was like this is the real version the one that he does like these days that's the version yeah no you can definitely hear that tension in the let's talk more rock of like two very different songwriters and like you know trying to make decisions that you know were clashing but yeah still like i remember like yeah, like I used to make like mix CDs and put like, you know, all my favorite John K. Sampson songs like on one CD and like pass it out to people and be like, you got to listen to this guy. He's so amazing. <laughs> amazing. Well, Brandon, I am, uh, you know, real pumped that we had this this opportunity uh, to talk about propaganda through such a weird entry point and in a way, I in a way I have regrets about it um, because I've enjoyed this conversation so much. But I'm also really grateful that something so weird brought us together. Um, what do you like? You know, as a fan of the band, like what do you like love about this band as a person who's just trying to get by in the world? What are some kind of like takeaway overall thoughts you've got um, about like this band and any 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 part of their history? Like with including yeah. John, including Todd, including Beav and Sulin. Like tell me about what they kind of mean to you um i think that they just like i mean it's twofold i think they just like shred and there's like no denying the fact that they are just like so good at what they do and they're um so i just love their music um but i think you know the the politics and the message and the community that like that they've been espousing since day one like was definitely one of those things that like intrigued me when i was younger um, and I just appreciate, like, I mean, the community that kind of is around them. Like you look at the John K's and the Jacobs and, you know, all the bands that they've been a part of and the community that you guys are creating. Like, I just think that, um, they are saying things really loudly that not enough people are listening to. And I just, you know, like they're never going to be a massive band. They're not going to be an Iron Maiden, but like, they're saying a lot of really important things and, and I think like 
they you know like with less talk more rock like they made a decision to like put anti-fascist you know pro-feminist like on that and like they're like we lost so much money because you know <laughs> how to clean everything was such a massive record right mm-hmm. so i think that just like speaks to their like ethos and like what they like this is what it's all about for them and i think that's so important because i think this day and age like so many people are like trying to like find a middle ground and i'm not saying that people shouldn't but like they're like this is actually what's happening and like we need to do something about it rather than like oh let's kind of like slightly work on this thing for like decades and not really have anything like it's like here's the problem here's you know what we need to do to encounter it or fix it so i don't know i think they're politics but yeah the fact that they just shred is i I love listening to their music and i'm in constant awe of like their talent all all of them well brandon i'm hoping that you continue your important and rewarding work uh teaching the kiddos And I hope that someday you are able to repurpose this song for a song where you're not singing AI generated lyrics and that this song takes on a new life for itself someday in a different project. Um, Thank you so much for being a part of our, our little, our journey here at the podcast. It's uh, it's great to have you. And I'm really pumped that we were able to hang out today. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Greg. So <laughs> <laughs>